Well, thanks again for joining me for these videos, which I share with you a main point, a question to ponder, and a little baby step to take, all designed to help you to become more generous and to live more generous lives, or as Paul writes, to excel in the grace of giving. So today's main point is simply this, that you can't outgive God. You cannot outgive God. And I'm going to go to the last book of the Old Testament, Malachi chapter 3. Some of you have probably read this section before, but hopefully give you some new twists on this. So let me just read uh, from Malachi chapter 3, uh, verses 6 and following. I, the Lord, do not change, so you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Man, that is great news in itself. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. So return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how are we robbing you? In your tithes and offerings. You are under a curse, the whole nation, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me. In this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be not room enough to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops, and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it's ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. And you can't outgive God. And so we should, if that's true, we should give him the best of what he has given to us. That's what the Bible is referred to as the first fruits. The first things that we give um, are to God. And we give him the best of the best. Why? Because we can't outgive God. And, and there's story after story uh, of people who have given to God first and given to God more. And God just continues to pour out blessings, which really makes sense. I mean, if you're God for just a moment, who are you going to trust more to? (laughs) The people who are going to give more and and do more with that, or the ones who are going to keep it and hoard it to themselves? So let me ask you this question today. How can others be blessed through your giving? How can others be blessed through your giving? I tell you, when you give um, to the ministry here, and I just want to share with you just a very quick story of somebody you've made an impact on. Um, Just recently, uh, Sunday morning, uh, a gentleman came by here early in the morning and I was just distraught. And our vicar um, spent some time talking with him and then put us in contact uh, with him. They had just lost uh, a baby, (laughs) sick and and died at eight months old. Um, Don't have a church home, but they live right here in the neighborhood. And and he had been walking by our property several times, even with the baby, with the stroller, and he just felt he needed to stop by. And because um, we have a vicar here, and because that has enabled us to free up some time on Sunday morning, because we have multiple staff members who can step into situations, um, we're doing a memorial service uh, for them, and loving on them, and caring for them. And you know what? You're part of that story, because your generosity made that happen. So... Here's my little baby step for you today. Make giving the first part of your budget. Just make that the first part of what you give. Give to God first and then live off the rest and see if that doesn't make you a more generous and joy-filled person. So thank you for watching this video. I look forward to sharing with you another one next week.